is virtual reality better than reality? <laughs> What's up, you nerdy geeks? CJ here. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to do another movie review. Uh, this week's movie, um, it's a movie that I'm not sure if any of you have ever seen. I didn't even know existed until we went to Goodwill and picked up a stack of movies for like 10 bucks. Um, but this week's movie is The Lawnmower Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the lawnmower man. This was about the the lawnmower man. No. <laughs> All right. So what would you think with a title called the lawnmower man and not really knowing much about it, like knowing a little bit about like VR or something? What are your first thoughts that run through your head for this movie? Uh. For me, I, I was like, the lawnmower man, like how, in my brain, I'm like trying to go through it, like if I was to write this movie, you know, I get a little synopsis of it, it's about some dude in VR, and then you also get the title, it's about lawnmower man, you know, the lawnmower man. So in my brain, I'm like, how do I write this? How do I write this? Oh, okay, so it, it, you get... Some guy who is tired of mowing his lawn or, you know, I, I, he's sick of his life, but he wants the perfect life. And he wants to be mowing his lawn in front of his, you know, house in a cul-de-sac or something. I don't know. Um, you know, that that's my, my thought process. You know, trying to go through this before we watch this movie. And dang, I did not understand <laughs> what was actually going to happen. Uh... So the movie itself is about a, a doctor, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, and he's trying to invent the world's best VR because it's going to take over the world in 2001, everyone's going to be connected and blah blah blah. So this movie has so many tropes of early 90s and 80s that it's, it's insane, like it's so bad um, with the tropes. It, it was made in 92. So you get all the fake Tron, like the original Tron. You get all that animation style, except worse. Like when you think of really bad VR, this is what all the animation in the movie's like. And they really, really tried. <laughs> they really tried something serious with this movie. And it did not work out the way I thought it was. Um, it, the synopsis of the movie did not do justice to what the actual movie was. And there's so many things wrong with it politically. Like, oh, it's so bad. <laughs> in a good way, though. Like, in a way that is worth at least watching once, I would say. Like, I would go through and watch that movie the one time I did. And be like, yeah, you know. Now it, I don't know how big this actually was. I was one year, one years old. That sound right? That's not right. One years old. I was a year old <laughs> when the movie came out. So I don't know if it made it to theaters. I don't know if it was straight to VHS at the time. I don't. I don't know if people loved it, you know. But reading the cover, it's like super exciting sci-fi thriller that you'll ever see the most amazing blah 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 like all these reviews and you get the weirdest sense of everything before you're going into this movie and then you watch the movie uh, alright so let me break it down for you so um, there's like two main characters you know uh, the, the doctor who's in charge of, who's super smart, I guess, and um, obsessed with VR. And a dumb guy who is like all the politically incorrectness of mental handicapped people 
of the early 90s, you know, uh, with all the symptoms rolled into one, you know, like, it's crazy strong, very smart in certain aspects, like building a mo um, a motor, <laughs> um, a motor or engine or something, or working with the lawn, and everything else is just bad. Can't talk to people. He, blah 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 blah. Like all the terrible tropes. That thankfully, we've gotten away from in current uh, movies and TV shows because we understand more about mental disabilities and different the different types of disabilities and stuff but back then I guess they didn't know anything and uh, it's so painful to watch the opening the first like hour is like that and you're just cringing the whole like the whole movie is just a giant cringe fest <laughs> it's so bad um, yeah, there's like the stereotypical bad dad who goes around and like beats his wife and child, you know, and they live next door and it's like, oh, why is that in the movie? But like the kid's son is friends with the, the dumb guy because that's how they call him. They don't call him, you know, the R word or anything. They just call him stupid throughout the whole movie. He's just stupid. He was born stupid and blah, blah, blah. So... That's something, I guess. They didn't use the R word, which is nice. Um, but he's friends with the kid, you know, and they like comics, and they share that in video games and whatever. Um, however, the stupid guy, uh, he's an assistant. He's like a helper uh, to a guy who runs a lawn company who does lawns around the town, I guess. And, you know, that's his day job. That's what he does. And then he goes home, and he lives at this church it's like catholic church who the priest took him in when he was a kid but i guess beats him and tries to get rid of the stupid from him for his entire life but now he's like 20 and he just still getting beat i don't know yeah uh so like those are little stories that they give you which i like those mini stories being in the movie you know it gives it some perspective and some background however the way they did is so cringy. Like, everything happens with no time lapse, no nothing happens. Just like, boom, something happens. Like, opening first day, first day of the movie, he, the doctor is like freaking out. And, oh, the, uh, let me tell you about the opening of this movie. I almost completely spaced and didn't tell you about this opening. And it messes you up. It throws you for a loop, and you're and you're still thinking like, how can this be about a lawnmower guy, like a guy mowing a lawn? The whole perspective of the opening scene is you're like sitting on a camera on top of a, a chimp's head, like a monkey's head, right? And he's like the test subject who is doing great and learning, and this VR is crazy helping his intellectual intellectual properties and just making everything skyrocket and he's so smart and he's it's gonna change everything and vr is gonna change the world and all humans are gonna be smart blah 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 um and then it cuts to this monkey and he's in a cage and he's so smart now he can somehow manifest a wire <laughs> hanger pick a lock get out of his cage Starts walking upright like a person <laughs> with this contraption on his head. Like he's still in virtual reality even though he's not in VR anymore. But he sees everything like a cyborg would see the world. Which, uh, hold on. And then uh, he starts walking and he sees the first guard of the facility he's in. And grabs his gun and shoots him. And then goes on a rampage trying to escape the facility, right? And... You're like, okay, so this is what the VR is like in this. And it turns reality into VR and vice versa or whatever. None of that happens again in the movie. None of that is like that ever again in the movie. It just was with this one special chimp. I don't know. And just the whole chimp thing, you're like, this is going to be another Planet of the Apes. Like, the monkeys are going to take over and it's ridiculous. Like, that's what you expect at the opening scene and then... Nothing's really mentioned again, except here and there. They're like, that was the greatest part of my experiment. And then it goes away. Okay. 
So then cut to the next day, you know, well, night, and then into the next day. Single day, 24 hours. You know, he his, mon his chimp gets murdered, trying to escape. And then he's all upset. He's like, I quit. I'm done working here. And then he's like fiddling with his VR stuff. And his wife, girlfriend, wife comes down. They never, uh, I'm assuming girlfriend because they never said he was married. But I think he had a ring on his finger. Uh, <laughs> it's not clear. Um, comes down and she's like, you promised you were going to take me to the city today. And he's like, I can't be around people today. I can't be around people, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's like way too over-dramatized for her what's actually happening. And it's just cringe. The whole argument is cringe. But then he kisses her and they kind of make up and everything's kind of settled. And she's like, fine. And she accepts it. And then something happens with uh, the, the stupid guy. And it comes back, you know, he's like, he mows the lawn or something. And then it comes back, still same day, like, that night, I guess. She comes into the, the basement where he's at doing his VR stuff, his homegrown VR stuff, and she's like, my plane is leaving in an hour. It's, I, I can't do this anymore, and I'm done. Like, everything was fine. It's been a, not even a day, it's been just a few hours you guys didn't even really have that big of a fight. Like, next door, the dude is screaming at his wife and, like, punching around and slapping around his kid. And But, you know, the time lapse? I don't know. And then the next scene, the doctor's sitting there and he's like, oh, I gotta figure something out. I gotta do a human test subject so I can refine my work. And, like, the dude's mowing his lawn again. And it's... It's based up north. It's not like here in Florida where, you know, it, you could get your lawn mowed in the summer twice a week. This is up north where even in the summer it doesn't rain all that often. Not like here in Florida. And it's like, how long has the time been? Is it just the next day just mowing his lawn again the next day? Like, here, grass needs me mowed again. I'm going to go mow it. Like, he's an assistant first off, so he's not driving the truck around. He's getting driven around saying, okay, this is our job for the day. This is our job for the day. Whatever. There's no, like, how long has it been? It, it doesn't tell us. And it, the whole movie is that way. It's so cringy. And <laughs> it's, oh, God. I, I'll say the plot was really good. Um, I enjoyed the way the plot worked or how it was supposed to work, I guess I'll say. Um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed how... Everything was supposed to come together. Like, I got the idea of the story and the writing behind it. It's just, they rushed parts that didn't need to be rushed, and then they slowed way back on parts that needed to be a lot more rushed. And it, I guess it's just 90s movies, but God, and the acting is so bad. <laughs> like, and these are some good actors in it. I'll get to that, but like, oh man, the lawnmower man. <laughs> All right, so would I call this movie horrortastic? <sighs> would I call this movie horrortastic? I'd say it has elements of horror in it. You know, there are the murders and uh, virtual realities evil and evil corporations and the government's bad and wants a war machine. Which, again, only slightly hinted at on why everything, but you're supposed to just... Your brain makes all the connections for you, but the movie is supposed to do that, and it doesn't. But, yeah, so, like, those tropes are there. But I would call this an action flick more than I would call this a horror movie, to be honest. Like, even does, like, the dark, ominous, like, parts, and, like, it tries to jump scare you, and it doesn't. It doesn't do any of that. <laughs> Alright, so I think I already said what was wrong with the movie. It was cringy. That's what was wrong with the movie. It was cringy and rushed when it didn't need to be rushed. It didn't even need... I felt like it took a long time for the movie to go through. And I felt like it was way too long of a movie. Like, everything could have been hit more smoothly. And in probably like a half hour less uh, runtime, to be honest. 
that's just me though. <laughs> I th it was good. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's what really drags this movie down. But it almost helps bring the movie up to where it's like one of those, it's so cringy, I need to watch this kind of thing. Does that make sense? <laughs> Alright. Favorite characters. Who would I say the favorite character is? Let me see. Um, they're all pretty good in their cringiness, you know, but... I gotta say the dude in the opening scene playing the the chimp or the real chimp playing himself. However they did it, because it kind of looks like a dude walking around in a suit, but then other shots of it, it's like, that might be a chimpanzee just walking around. But it's, I don't know. However they did it, the most they did it the most cringy way possible because there's clear scenes that there's a monkey. You know, that there's a, a, a an ape chimpanzee thing sitting right there, right? And he's got this contraption on his head. And then other scenes, it's just like, that's a dude in a costume. <laughs> so I gotta say, that's my favorite. That was my favorite scene. That was my favorite character. I gotta give it that. Like, yeah. All right, now <laughs> I'm doing the fun facts, which I'm gonna be start. I'm gonna read some of these for you. Uh, I'm using the IMDb app. Um, so if anyone wants to look them up too, you can go on the app and type in the lawnmower man. <laughs> um, so the first one is, first one I thought was interesting, which is so obvious in the movie. Uh, the lawnmower man at one point gets like telekinesis. He's so smart that he unlocks parts of his brain and he's using telekinesis to like move stuff around. At one point he's like lifting a chair up to demonstrate his powers to the doctor or something. It's a very, like, obvious scene. It's kind of cheese. Like, in comparison to all the other times he uses telekinesis, like, why is the scene in here? But whatever. Um, he's lifting the chair up, right? And clear as day, you can see the wires hanging on the chair, lifting the chair up. It's, oh my god, it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, another scene... Uh, that was kind of cheesy. Um, he uses telekinesis powers again to make a dude shoot himself in the back of the head. Or shoot himself in the head. But as the dude's falling, you can see the device that's used to like spray the blood on the back of the wall. <laughs> it's, he's like, boom! And like a, a hole appears on his head and then the blood sprays. And then he like falls. And like you can see the thing on the back of his head. If you uh, if you go to watch the movie, then wa at the very beginning there's like text printed right uh, that like describes the movie, so you get caught up really quick. That little cheese thing that they do. Um, the word millennium in it is misspelled. So if you go to watch the movie, look out for that at the very beginning. The text kind of disappears too fast. You can read it good enough in your head. It, like It's there long enough to read it in your head. But kind of quickly. But look out for that. Look out for the word millennium being misspelled. <laughs> Here's a fun fact that I didn't realize until just now reading the fun facts. This is actually based off a short story from Stephen King. Um, I can see the influence, but the movie was so bad that it's not recognized as one of Stephen King's greatest movies, I guess. Um, and the only part that's actually used, like, dialogue-wise from his his short story is when the cop says, parts of him are in the birdbath. It's so cheesy. Dude gets killed by a lawnmower at one point. I guess his body explodes and goes everywhere and goes, there's parts of him in a birdbath. Like, it's so bad. Uh, and the last fun fact I'm going to give you guys, you can look the rest up on the app. It's, this is a strange one, but, uh, do you guys remember when I had long hair? You can watch a couple videos ago, you, you can see that. Um, I used to get, I look like David Koresh a lot, who was a cult leader back in Waco, Texas, um, and that was a whole mess, uh, on both sides, to be honest. It's a whole nother story, we might get into that when I do, if I ever do, like, run-throughs on stuff like that. However, David Koresh, famous cult leader, uh, 
I guess this was his favorite movie ever. It was found in FBI files uh, later on in his life after he died, I guess. Yeah, The Lawnmower Man was David Koresh's favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, so that's something. <laughs> All right, so now I have to rate the movie. <laughs> Uh, one through five spooks on our spook scale. Because, you know, patent pending, spook scale, Dirt Nerd Geek Squad. <laughs> um, God, I'm going to give this a two. I'm going to give this a two because it's not scary at all, but it's totally worth the watch. Knowing it's made off of a Stephen King short story makes it make a little more sense. And I can see why there were so much horror tropes in it. It's just not scary <laughs> at all. I, there's nothing scary about it. Um, but yeah, uh, go check it out if you want a good laugh at something that's supposed to be terrifying. And yeah, have a good day, squad. Love you guys.